Hi, and welcome along to the next in our video series about Kubernetes security fundamentals. In our last video, we were looking at the main Kubernetes API server, uh, how it's seen on a network, and some of the information that attackers may be able to see if they're trying to fingerprint or access a Kubernetes cluster. In this video, what we're going to do is carry on with our look at the core APIs of Kubernetes, and we're going to take a look at the kubelet. Let's just take a second to remind ourselves about the various different APIs and ports that we've got. This diagram here shows a list of all the ports you will see on a standard kubeadm cluster. Uh, and today we're going to take this look at the kubelet port down the bottom here. Now the kubelet will, is a component which will run on every worker node in the cluster and may also run on the control plane nodes as well. Essentially, it's the component that starts containers on each node. So if, for example, in some distributions, like kubeadm, your control plane components run as containers, there needs to be a kubelet there to actually start and manage them. So in terms of where you'll see this, pretty much on every, potentially every node in the cluster, or at very least, every worker node in the cluster. And that applies to both managed and unmanaged Kubernetes distributions. There's two main ports that we're going to talk about, uh, which is 10248 and 10250. So let's take a look at a demo and actually show you exactly how this looks. So here we have our standard uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, running inside Kind. And as we've said, we've got a couple of potential ports here. So we're going to do ss-ltmp, which is the command which lets us see the ports that are listening on the host. And we can see here that we've got 10250 here. And we've also got 10248. So these are the two ports that we're going to talk about. We've actually, if you're looking close, you might notice we've also got 10255. And I'll talk about that a little bit towards the end. So we'll start with the easy one, which is 10248. This is the kubelet health z port. It by default will only listen on the local host. And all it has is a single endpoint, which basically returns OK if the, if the kubelet is healthy. So we can check that out. We can just do curl. It's HTTP, so there's no HTTPS involved. And we'll do 127.0.0.1.10248 slash health said. And you'll see it's kind of hard to see because it merges in with the prompt, but we can see here we've got back an OK response because the kubelet is up and running. Now, this is a pretty common pattern in Kubernetes services. You actually find quite a few of the services have got health Z endpoints. And essentially, it's used for health checking to make sure things are up and running. Um, if you see health set on that port, it's a fair bet you've run into a kubelet. Um, but there's not a huge amount of information beyond the fact that you know that that's one of the main defaults. So the next one is obviously more interesting, which is our main kubelet port. Now, the kubelet has um, an API which allows you to do quite a range of things. Um, there's things like, for example, executing commands inside containers or getting all the logs uh, from the node. So there's actually quite a lot of functionality there, and it's not a particularly well-documented API. However, from an unauthenticated standpoint, it's relatively simple. It looks a bit like this. If we do curl minus k, https 127.0.0.1, you get a 404 on the root. So if you do that, you'll get a 404 on the root, nothing there. Only if you try and get one of the paths that actually responds to something, you'll get something else. So if we do slash pods, for example, this command, if we were authorized, would give us a list of all the pods and the details of what they're running on the host. Um, we'll get back unauthorized. And that's, so we, we can't get to that without credentials. So if you're trying to get access to Kubernetes node, you probably won't be able to get access. But again, this particular pattern, having the 404 on the root and then having a unauthorized when you hit pods is a pretty good fingerprint. If you're trying to identify kubelets, on a network that you're scanning, then that particular pattern is pretty reliably going to be a kubelet. So by default, there shouldn't be an awful lot of information that you can get out of these network ports for the kubelet from an unauthenticated perspective. However, there is one example uh, which is worth a little bit of conversation because you can still see it on some specific Kubernetes distributions or on older clusters. And that is a thing called the read-only kubelet port. And the read-only kubelet port is kind of a historical port that was used for monitoring and metrics and things like that. Um, and it was, um, un or it is, unauthenticated. So there's no authentication option on the read-only port. And it listens on TCP port 10255. 
So if it's listening, you can actually get a lot of information without authentication, which is if you're an attacker or doing some sort of recon or bug bounty work, pretty useful. So let's take a little look at what that looks like. So if we do curl, and again, there's no HTTPS on it, we do 127.0.0.1, 10255, we'll get the 404, so it works exactly the same as the kubelet on the root. But then if we go and get the slash pods endpoint, as an example, we're going to pipe this through JQ because it returns a large quantity of JSON and, and JQ makes it a lot easier to read. We actually get back all of the information of all of the containers running on this host. So notably, it's not all of the containers running across the entire cluster because the kubelet only handles a single node, but it is all of the information that exists about pods running on this node. And from an information disclosure standpoint, there's obviously going to be quite a lot of information that could be pretty useful to attackers if they get access to this. Um, for example, you'll be able to see things like all of the command line parameters. So here, for example, we have a cube scheduler uh, um, container, and we can see all of the parameters that it was launched with. So that kind of thing is pretty useful, but it is read-only. You can't actually um, modify the configuration doing this. So it's more of a big information disclosure than something that would allow you to probably compromise the entire node. So hopefully that's been interested. We've taken a quick look at the kubelet. It is quite an interesting service. And if you're doing any kind of pen test or review, it's one definitely to delve into. What we're going to do next time is we're going to carry on and look at some of the other services uh, that are available from Kubernetes, some of the less used ones. Um, as ever, there is more information on our blog, on our Security Labs blog. And also I look very forward to seeing you in the next video.